Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining me to my talk. But before we delve into the talk itself, I want to start with a hypothetical uh, story, something that probably never happened to you as a developer. So you are sitting at office and you are writing the best application that, uh, that uh, you, are, you ever wrote. It has super fast features on your machine. You're coding it and you're very, very fond of all the features that you created. And then you ship the application to production. Now meet Mark. Mark is one of your customers and Mark uh, browsed into your application, your web application, and he's waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And he's still waiting until today. And you know what happens when your customers are getting into your application and they are very happy about it. And you at least tried and you created that application on your machine, but you lacked the tests of uh, your application over uh, networks like 3G or browsers in the mobile or even tablets or anything else. And to your uh, comfort, many web applications, many sites fail as well in the page ranks that they get about performance uh, from PageSpeed and uh, Lighthouse and all the tools that measure that. So we're, we're in good company, but can we do better? Can we make Mark happy? Can we make our application blazing fast? And this brings me to the topic of today. We're going to talk about the resumability and about a framework that enables you to create resumability, that framework is called Quick. But before that, uh, a little bit about myself. If you not, don't know me, I'm Gil Fink. I'm Sparks' CEO and a senior consultant. I'm working in the uh, IT industry for around 20, uh, 20 years. Um, I'm a Google Web Technology, Technologies GDE or Google Developer Expert. Uh, since 2019, and I even wrote a book, which is called Pro Single Page Application Development. Uh, that, could, that, that book was written around 2014. It was published then. Still, some of the content in the book are relevant for today, even though the book was written with a library that was um, known back then, uh, that is called Backbone, the, the father of uh, Angular and React and all the great frameworks that we use today. Now, what we're going to do in the next uh, 25 minutes. First of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about core web vitals and what are core web, web vitals, why should you care? Then we will talk about the problems that, the problem that led to the creation of the resumability idea. And then we will talk about quick and how we can get started with that framework. So let's go. What is core web vitals? Core web vitals are the measurements that Google suggests to measure uh, in, in, in their, their standard. So whenever you are using tools like Lighthouse or PageSpeed, you will get some of those measure, measurements out of uh, the, those tools and let's understand what are those measurements and how they help to increase your performance of your website. So first of all, LCP or largest contentful paint. This is when we're talking about the loading of the page. What is the largest con uh, contentful paint that is created on the page? For example, the biggest image, the biggest text or something like that. This measurement, if it is produced below 2.5 seconds, then you're in a good place. If it is produced between 2.5 to 4 seconds, then you need improvement. Above 4 seconds to the largest contentful paint, um, please refactor your application or your web page that you're currently measuring. 
The second measurement that we should uh, uh, understand is FID or feed, the first input delay. That measurement declares the inter interactivity of the, the events in your web page. What I mean by that, you click on a button and the interaction should happen below 100 milliseconds. And if it happens between, or it runs between 100 and 300 milliseconds, you need improvement. Above 300 milliseconds for some delay of interactivity, you, you will see the, some, uh, you know, junk, junk with A, not with U. Uh, the, the page will look a little bit junky and things won't work as expected. Last but not least, CLS or cumulative layout shift. The, how the, the visibility of your web page uh, stability works. That means my, mostly in your animation, the frames that you are producing. Okay, if you're producing animation below 10 milliseconds, then you're on the good path. So you won't miss frames. Between 10 to 25 milliseconds, some frames will be missed and you won't get 60 frames per second and your animation will look quirky a little bit. Above 25 milliseconds for some frame producing, it's poor, don't do that you will see the animation runs not smoothly as you expected. So now that we understand the measurements, we understand that we need to, to, to make those measurements or work with those measurements in order to configure or make the application much more faster. Now, as I said, many applications and websites fail core web vital tests. You can see here, uh, for example, the rank of Amazon. It's only 67. Um, things like uh, Nike website or Gap or Target or things like that. A lot of companies, big companies fail. So who is responsible for those slow websites or slow application? Is it the internet? Is it the you know, servers that uh, produce the applications? Is it the developers? Um, so there are a, a lot of measurements that uh, were taken uh, on a lot, a lot of uh, companies from, from the 500 uh, com uh, companies. And what you you probably will see is most of the, the, the application fail in the Lighthouse score because um, of this part, optimizing JavaScript. What I mean by that, you can see here that if you optimize JavaScript, you will get rank of 83 um, um, in, in one, one place. So whenever you are optimizing your JavaScript, the amount of JavaScript and the amount of work that you're doing with JavaScript, then your application will get a better rank and will be less, less uh, uh, sorry, not less, but it will be very performant. And that means that, hey, if you don't have JavaScript in your page and no interactivity, then you will get 100 in your score, but nothing will work. Now, let's talk about the big O notation of frameworks. We're using great frameworks like React, Angular, Vue, Svelte, and a lot of other known frameworks out there. But the idea is that whenever you, you use those frameworks for interactivity, they're doing a lot, a lot of computational uh, com computations whenever the page is loading and whenever you are doing something in the page. I mean that you have something like a linear function of when the amount of JavaScript that you're creating and the decreasing of the website performance, okay? Now, the, that current linear uh, thing is, is something that will happen in every application. Whenever you have application, you are creating interactivity, you are creating more JavaScript, more JavaScript means less performance, and this is a cycle. So can we break that cycle? 
can we create a framework that runs in O of one and not O of N? This is where Quick comes into place. But before we are talking about, we are going to talk about Quick, let's talk about resumability. And what's the idea of resumability? The idea of resumability is, let's think about a virtual machine. When you're taking, uh, uh, you're creating a virtual machine on your computer, and then you are closing it and you are moving it to another place, to another computer, and you are opening it, it is resumed from the place that you closed the, the virtual machine. Can we do that in the web? Can we do that in HTML? You know, let's send the HTML and it will resume for, with the state that it had before. So this is something that you can't do with the, uh, the, 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 um, the frameworks of today, the component frameworks that we are using like React or Angular or Svelte, because those, those frameworks are using hydration process in order to create the entire web page. That means that if you're using SSR, server-side uh, server rendering, in order to create your components and then send them to the client, the frameworks need to run the entire process again of producing the components in the client be because they need to wire all the event handlers and all the functionality interactivity that you created. And then you're doing this, this thing twice, both on the server side with server side rendering and in the client side. Now in resumability, the idea is to produce the entire code on the server and to resume it on the browser without the JavaScript. So you will probably ask, what about the JavaScript? I'm, I want event handlers. I want everything in, in, in to create the interactivity in my application. So the idea is that frameworks like Quick are going to prefetch the event handlers and they are going to wire the event handlers only on demand, lazy loading or lazy interaction. That means that if you are clicking on a button in a resumable application, then, then only then the file, the JavaScript content that needs to run will be prefetched or fetched and then it will run, okay? So that's the idea of resumability, to create a resumable application. Everything is lazy loaded on the client side and let's see it in action. So in order to get started with quick, you can run in your command line, the, the command npm create quick at latest. Then you will get some interactivity in the command line that uh, you pick a project name, and a starter a bootstrapper, and then it will do npm install. Uh, you, you will do npm install, install all the libraries and things that are uh, related to Quick, and you will be ready to go. So let's see it in action. And let's open an application that was generated by the command line of cre npm create Quick at latest. Okay, it will generate this starter. This is the basic starter. I didn't want to do that uh, during the, the talk because it might take a couple of minutes up until NPM runs and install everything and et cetera, et cetera. And now we have the, the application here. Okay, so I already did NPM run start in the command line here, okay, to start the web development server. And it, is, it opened this web page. Now, if I will open the F12 tools or developer tools, and I will re, uh, run the, the application again, what you will see, I, I, I do the, um, I'm only showing you in the network tab, all the JavaScript that was downloaded. You will see that these, these three files are related to Vite, the developer the cell server uh, that uh, runs uh, quick is a uh, Vite, okay? Now, I will scroll down a little bit. Let's open this and scroll and scroll and scroll up. 
something happened. There was lazy loading for the link component, um, which is this link here. And when I hovered on that, you can see that we got link underscore component A on mouse over. Let's go. And this is the script for the mouse over, okay? So everything is lazy loaded on demand. Now you probably ask yourself, okay, so now if I press the button, okay, what, what next? Okay, so you can see here that uh, I moved it to another uh, page in the application. It has some animation, okay, and it's cool. That, uh, that is a cool animation that you can create, of course. Um, but what about the, the, the JavaScript files? So what Quick is doing is it is dividing your entire application to a lot of small JavaScript chunks that will be lazy loaded. In production, it will have a service worker that will prefetch all the resources beforehand, and then you will be able to interact with the, the scripts fast <clears throat> through the, that service worker. In development, it, it is working differently a little bit. Okay, now let's do something. Let's create our first quick component. So how can we do that? So let's code something. Okay, so I will start with the basic thing. Let's export const my button. And it's going to be a quick component. And what you can see here, a quick component is decorated with the dollar sign here. It's a function from the quick uh, library. And let's just uh, create our component. Let's see, let's do something like this. I'm going to get a label and uh, from the outside, that label is going to be a string. And then I'm going to return my button, okay? So whenever you're creating application with Quick, Quick is using JSX, the same JSX from React and uh, Solid <coughs> that uh, a lot of people really love. Okay, and then I can do something like uh, label, and I can do something like on click dollar that signs to quick optimizer, and I'll explain a little bit about the optimizer in a few seconds. Uh, <clears throat> and then let's do something like um, alert, um, hello world. Now, if I did everything as expected, let's remove this um, and that's it. I don't want to type here for now. Of course, we will want it uh, later on. Let's import my button and let's give it a label equals to some label, uh, click me. And let's refresh everything. And voila, we have a button here. Okay, <clears throat> so we created our first quick button. <clears throat> now let's click it. And you can see that only when I clicked it, the on click was loaded. Okay, and we get the low world, the event handler. Now, as promised, what is this? Quick optimizer. So the quick optimizer is a process that will run in the build when you, whenever you are building the quick application, and it will search for all the dollar signs in order to produce files from the, those dollar signs. That means that I will get a file, a JavaScript file that will include all the event handler here. And there will be a different JavaScript file for the component here, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Now let's get back to the slide deck. So we saw a little bit about how we can create a component in, in Quick. You use the component decorator, component dollar decorator, and then you create your components using JSX. 
Uh, so if you're not familiar with JSX, it's a Java, uh, sorry, HTML in JavaScript format that was produced uh, by uh, React at first and later on uh, was um, used in other frameworks as well. And what you also saw, but I didn't indicate it, is Quick City. Quick as a framework gives you the ability to create a interactivity and using quick, but whenever we're talking about um, creating a web application or website with quick, with, with, click, with quick, we need to talk about Quick City. Quick City is a meta framework built around quick that includes the routing and the ability to create web API and client server integration and, and, and interactions and et cetera, et cetera. So, Let's jump into a different demo right now. We, that demo is, is uh, called the agency. You can find it online um, in, uh, in my uh, GitHub. Um, here, it's uh, public. I created a sam sample application, a uh, big application that you can look at whenever you want to create some quick application you want to get started with it. This is the application itself. You can see that uh, we have uh, um, a homepage and you can move <clears throat> to a details page. Um, you can edit an agent. Um, you can delete an agent. You can, of course, you can delete Chuck Norris, of course, but if we want to rename his, his uh, name, let's call it Chucky. You can save it. It do it will do a round trip to the server and it will save uh, Chuck Norris' uh, uh, name. You can toggle things here. Let's see it. Uh, let's see the interaction uh, in the network. Whenever I press here, no. Okay, I pressed something there. You can see that the, we got the handle key press, and this is the code for handle key press and et cetera, et cetera. So this is a full-blown application with routing. You can see that we have a route to details one, which is James Bond and the route to edit one and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so you have a full-blown application. I can, of course, talk about quick more and more and more, but uh, we have a time constraint and let's move on. So. You can use Quick City Meta Framework in order to create quick, quick applications. Uh, I urge you or encourage you to go to the GitHub uh, um, page that, uh, that uh, I showed earlier. It's uh, under my user, which is Gilf in GitHub. Okay, and play with the, the, the application itself. So, a little bit about something that is called Quick UI, Quick Dash UI. Quick Dash UI is an open source component library built with Quick that uh, uh, I'm helping to build. Okay. Um, another speaker that will be in the part four of this conference, Shai Resnick, is also involved in Quick UI. We're building a component library. You can't have a framework without a major component library. So we hope that this will be the major component library. And if you are interested, in helping us, I urge you to come and uh, talk with us uh, um, later on, uh, and you know, create PRs to create more quick UI components in our uh, library. So, with that, let's summarize. If we are talking about the shift that we had in from the past for and to today, and late looking to the future. In the past, we started with rendering and interactivity separated. Uh, you had the server that were run uh, PHP, Java, Rails, uh, uh, .NET, etc., and the interactivity was with the small libraries like jQuery. They were very performant, but the development and the user experience and the DX, the developer experience, were very awful. In today we're talking about rendering and interactivity united into a single framework. You are using Angular, React, Svelte, Vue. You have a unified model. You have developer experience, which is great, but 
you use hydration underneath, which is the process that all those frameworks are using, and that makes the interactivity in, uh, less performant. We're, when we are talking about the future, we're talking about frameworks like WIC. There are other frameworks like Wiz from Google that wasn't, uh, it's not open sourced yet, uh, publicly, publicly open source, um, or Marco or Astro. These uh, future uh, frameworks are aiming both to developer experience and performance. Hopefully, you will use one of them and make your application resumable, make them quick with quick, of course, and make Mark happy. Thank you very much. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Gil Fink. If you have any questions, this is the time to ask them.